About a month ago, I posted this on my Instagram story. Unsurprisingly, I was immediately bombarded with DMs asking to spill the tea. Now I love a good story with a little bit of knowledge sprinkled along the way, which is exactly what this is, but I hate long YouTube intros, so I hope you're hooked. This story takes place on the island of Havar. It's one of the most beautiful but bougie places you can visit. And I spent an ungodly amount of credit card points to get this room for two nights at the Podstein Hotel with this incredible cove, this pebble beach, and this pier for diving and cliff jumping off of just across the way. So the first evening we're there, go down to this pebble beach, we're snapping a few photos. I bring the drone, but you know, honestly, I'm not really interested in flying it. And just before sunset, I think, you know what, I'll, I might as well throw it up, zip around. As soon as I take off, the sun goes down. So at this point, I'm just lazily flying around, probably under a 15 minute flight. After a bit, I realize I'm not really getting great footage or photos because of the low light, so I decide to come back. And as I'm coming back, I realize that the pier on the other side of the cove has this massive trail going towards it. And I'm like, oh, okay, like we should go over there. That looks like a cool spot. I can see it up here from the drone, but I can't see it from where I'm at at my hotel. As I'm flying back, I also notice these uh, two guys standing in the backyard. My first thought, oh, they're probably uh, gonna be upset. Somewhat near their house. I wasn't flying over them. I was just bringing the drone back to me. And that was the one thought that went through my head was, oh, those guys, you know, whatever. Well, reviewed the footage later, those guys actually show up a couple times in the footage and I didn't notice when I was flying. I come back, start the landing sequence and I'm asking Alex to take a few photos. And so like the landing sequence is a little delayed. I'm just like hovering there. TLDR, it takes me a while to land. So I gather up all my gear once I've landed and I head over to the Pebble Beach. And as I get to the beach, there's this guy walking over to me in a red shirt and he's waving me down. And the first thing he just yells at me is, police. And I say, okay, well, okay, I'm chilling here. Like, what do you need? And he goes, police again, police. He says it like over and over, police. This begins what I think is a situation that I'm gonna handle with ease. I have my license. I looked up the drone laws here in Croatia before I got here. I'm set because this local cop doesn't know anything. The neighbor was angry, he called him over and he was like, you know, his buddy. And he wanted him to, you know, slap my wrist, give me a fine. So my first interaction with him is, is kind of confusing. He's asking for the drone. I'm telling him no, because I know <laughs> the laws here in Croatia, but like he's not really understanding. So I'm getting Google Translate out. I also go to the Croatian website that has their drone laws and I copy and paste them into Google Translate. And I ask him, I'm like, which of these rules am I breaking right now? Because I'm not like near an airport. I'm a, I'm a licensed pilot. Shouldn't need permission to fly here. There's no signs. He's not really taking any of that information well. At this point, there's a there's a lady that's sitting on the beach, like watching the interaction. I ask her, do you know English? Can you like translate for me? And that gets a little bit easier, but he's still not absorbing the information that I'm giving him and letting me leave. At that point, I'm getting a little bit frustrated. I mean, he's saying that I'm gonna be taken down to the police station. And I'm telling him, no, I'm not, because you need to tell me what I did wrong. I was still confident, but I, I wasn't trying to be like rude to him. I, I, there was a little bit of frustration there, but I was trying my best to like keep it under wraps. So eventually a younger guy comes down these steps, which I'm now noticing are like, just like a secret tunnel where these guys are coming out of. He speaks a little bit of English and he says, we're taking you to the police station. I'm having that conversation with him while he's taking me back to my hotel saying, we need to get your passport, we need to verify your information, and then we're handing you off to the local cops. And then I say, what, what, wait, wait, the, act the local cops, the, wait, you're not a local cop? I can't remember the exact words that he used as we're walking back to the hotel, but he said that was just like a special airspace. There's signs say no flying drones, but they're on the other side of the cove from where I took off and I hadn't, hadn't been over there yet. So I hadn't seen the signs. Reviewing the footage, I can see that like, oh, there's a sign, but like, I can't read it. So I'm like, okay, well, I, did, I didn't take off from over there. I haven't even been over there yet. So like, I'm fine, right? And he's like, no, you're going to the police station. And I'm like, there's no way out of that, right? There's like no, like, what am I, what am I being charged with? Um, and they're not really telling me. That's where everything kind of shifted for me from 
like trying to talk myself out of a, a fine into figuring out like, okay, like how am I going to like continue this vacation? Uh, how long am I going to be downtown? Uh, am I going to be able to talk my way out of this? And so that's where like the stress hit in. And I, I think that's why I forgot to communicate to Alex uh, that I was getting taken down to the station. She had no idea <laughs> what was going on. They hand me off to the cops, they put me in the back of the cop car, and they drive me 30 minutes to uh, Havar downtown, take me into the police station. <laughs> That's where it like just gets real weird because they started asking me questions, and then as soon as I would answer, they would call up somebody else and speak in Croatian for, you know, five or 10 minutes, come up to me and be like, you need a permit to fly. And I'd be like, well, permit? And they're like, a license. And I'm like, yes, I have that. And they're like, oh, show it to us. I'm like, why didn't you lead with that? Like, why am I here at the police station? You guys could have looked at my license back at the hotel. If I would not have had my license, that would have been bad news bears. They were basically looking for, it for any reason to hold me up. Because at one point after I gave my license, he told me that I need to get permission to fly. Uh, and I said, really? I need to get permission to fly? Uh, I didn't know, I haven't seen anything about this airspace. He's like, well, if you're near an airport. And I was like, right, is there an airport near here? And he said, there's an airport in Split, which is, you know, 30 miles away, I think. And so I'm like, yeah, right. I'm not lying near an airport, right? I don't need to get permission. I was a little confused, like why they were drilling me on all these other things when there was a sign that just said no droning. Like it's very obvious that I missed it. That's the rule that's being broken here. I flew over this area where you're not supposed to fly. Still don't know what that area was or why I wasn't able to fly over it. They continued to kind of grill me and then they took me into the back room. And since none of them spoke English, they had me fill out the paperwork for <laughs> detaining me. I'm like filling out my passport information. I'm describing like what I, what I filmed, what I was doing. Um, and meanwhile, they're just kind of like watching me. But they're keeping it very serious. They're, the whole time, uh, I'm like not sure what's going to happen to me. I'm still thinking that there's some reason why that one security guard thought that I was trying to uh, spy on somebody. Still didn't really know who. Hour and a half, two hours at the police station of filling out paperwork and answering questions. They told me that they wanted to look at the SD card. They wanted to see what was on there. I Once again, I was like, you guys could have, I was offering to show you this footage uh, back at the hotel. You could have looked at it. I also told them that like, I didn't care about the flight. I would have just deleted it because I didn't want to have to deal with going down to the police station. As soon as they looked at it, they didn't even like review all the footage. They just like skimmed through it. The captain comes up to me. They said, you flew over the president's house. He's sleeping in there. And you could have flown over any beach, any house, any hotel, anywhere else in Croatia, except for that house. Gives me the biggest handshake ever, completely flip switched, like I'm their best bud now. And it turns out that the other guy, he's secret service. That explains why he didn't really understand the local drone laws, because he's secret service. He's just making sure that I'm not doing real shady shit. Then they just like handed it back to me and they said, you're good to go. Taking you back to the hotel, hand me off to a uh, rookie guy here that you can see in the oh, in the car with me. And uh, this is the only footage that I actually captured while I was in detainment oh. was the ride back. And I accidentally took a screenshot while I was trying to set up the video. And that's what I posted on my Instagram story. And so now you know, you know the full story. And I didn't have to sit down for 20 minutes and, and tell you. And you have you have visuals to go along with it. How great is that? So if you want to avoid going to prison for flying over a president's house when you're in another country, just keep these things in mind. Keep your license on you and make sure it's up to date. Be aware of the signs. Research the airspace beforehand. Know the laws so that you're not nervous and you look guilty. Keep your cool for sure. That helps so much. I think that if I had lost my cool and treated the cops with disdain or anything like that, who knows what would have happened. It was not looking pretty to me for uh, for a bit, even though at the beginning I was like, aha, gonna fool this cop, gonna catch him. Oh, awkward. So you, uh... I'm having dinner with a guest. Who's this guy? Hey, what the f***, man? It's a girl. Oh.